Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Team Doctor Tuesday. Today, we are going to take a look at collections. Collections are a great way for you to get XP as well as uh, start getting, getting closer to Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle obviously being the final collection reward, a very good card, one that you can prestige. You also get Craig Biggio, which can be your catcher, uh, and Gary Sheffield, all great cards. Um, so I'm going to show you a method today that helps me save a lot of stubs while I'm going for collections now. I've done this for four collections so far. These are some of the cheapest collections. And one thing that I also want to point out, while you do these collections, you also get 10 team affinity points for whatever team that you're going for. Now, we'll take a look, and you guys can see that I am 40, 40 points out of 70. At 50, I get team affinity, Josh Bell. And I will, I will do the Pirates collection this video and show you that you indeed get the face of the franchise card whenever you, whenever you complete the collections. Well, you get 10 points whenever you complete the collections, and I'll show you that you can use that to get the face of the franchise cards a little faster. Now, let's take a look at the Pirates collection here. Now, I've been flipping a few of the Pirates cards in the past. The card that I was flipping was Keone Kella. Keone Kella was going for about 800 stubs, and you could buy him for just about 700. As you can see, his price has changed a little bit now, um, but I did keep one. I, I always keep an extra of every card just in case. Uh, but that kind of is what we do to save some stubs on these collections. So what I'm going to do is you can see that I need... Probably about mm, two thirds of the pirates, and you can see that I have about 121,000 stubs right now. So I'm going to talk you guys through my method, and then I'm going to do this method for maybe three or four teams, and you guys can see just how many stubs it costs me to to do the entire collections. Now, what I'm going to do is we'll pick this guy, Clay Holmes. And what I do is you click square, you view in marketplace, and as you can see, right, if you watch my first Team Doctor Tuesday video, you can see that his sell now is a lot lower than his buy now. And what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in multiple, multiple sell orders so that people can sell them to me for, for whatever price, and we're going to buy two or three, we're gonna keep one for the collections and then we're gonna sell them. So you can see right here, and this is a great tip even if you're trying to flip cards, his, his sell now, right, there's one for 26, but then below that there's 16. So there's no reason for me to put it at 27 because only one other person has to sell, sell their card to that person and then we're good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put the buy order at 17 Right, so if somebody buys or if somebody pulls Clay Holmes and sells him, uh, it's gonna go to the guy buying it for 26 first, and then me second. Right, so I'm gonna put in about three orders here. You're buying him for for 17, and then what happens is if I sell him, if I sell him for even 50 stubs, right, that's pretty much three times. The amount of stubs that I that I bought him for that I can sell him for um, so that's the method right you can see that somebody put it up for higher for 28 that got sold boom um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this for the pirates now I just want to touch in and and let you guys know that you know I'm noticing some of these players are very easy to flip right and then you have other players like this guy Eric Gonzalez Eric Gonzalez, the, the differential in stubs is only uh, 25 stubs. So if I buy him for 133 and then I even sold him for 157, right, I'm not making many stubs. I'm only making about eight stubs, and that's risky 
because there might be somebody that puts him lower. So if the if the differential of stubs, especially for these bronze players, if it's commons, if it, it's different, if it's one of these bronze players and the difference is within maybe maybe like thirty, maybe fifty, at the at the least, right? Don't don't bother in buying two, right? I'll I'll go over it here in a second, but if you look at the amount of cards that you get, or the amount of stubs actually that you get, not cards, if you look at the stubs that you get, you get two, four, eight, plus 1,500, right? So you get a decent amount of stubs. You get just over, just over 2,000 stubs. So it's okay if you don't flip every single card, right? Like some of the golds, you're not gonna be able to flip, but it's worth it with the stubs that you get to do it for for most of the cards now i also want to come in and just say this card right here is a perfect example of a card that you can flip a lot of people are are always in my stream asking me how do you flip cards how do you make stubs this that and the other thing this nick birdie right so if i buy him and those 279 buy orders are me if i buy him for 279 and i sell him even for 400 right that is almost a hundred stubs that I'm making every single time one of these cards sells. Just like that. Right? And if I bump it up, if I bump it up to for 430, right? That's over a hundred stubs that I'm making every single time that it sells. And again, my method of making stubs isn't flipping these giant cards and, and taking high risk, high reward flips. It's doing it consistently and with a large 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 amount of transactions all right guys so it's been about an hour uh in this last hour i've completed three collections and i have a worksheet here a little google sheet that i made and i just want to go over how much each one of the collections that i did would have cost combined now the three collections that I did, I did the White Sox collection, and I haven't collected this yet, just so you can see the amount of stubs that I spent um, before I finish the collections. Before I get the, the amount of stubs back, I should say, uh, right above me. So I did the Tigers, the White Sox, and the Pirates. Now if you remember, I had probably about six or seven cards each and i went ahead and looked at the total price of those cards the total price of the cards that i had um i added it up probably was and this is obviously depending on how much i get for them was probably only about a thousand fifteen hundred stubs eh, ish in that ballpark so we'll we'll round it to maybe twelve hundred so subtract 1,200 stubs from what I have now, and that's how much stubs you would save using this method. Um, so I went ahead and did the, um, did the calculation, and I, I have the sheet right here. So combining the price of all of the players, uh, if you just went on buy orders, which I don't recommend, it would have cost just about, just about, 35,000 stubs. Now, this is, you know, a one or two of the players here was overpriced. Uh, I think somebody is trying to price fix them. Um, but that's the amount of price, that's the amount of stubs you would have spent if you had done the collections today, like I did, just using the buy orders. If you had just done it using sell orders, so what I mean by that is if we view this in the marketplace, I looked at the sell now price. And I pretended that you you went in and did it, you know, one above, one above what the current sell now price is. I went and did that for all three teams. The price for that would have been twenty six thousand stubs. So I started off around a hundred and twenty one thousand stubs, right? Just about there at the beginning of the video, and I am only down. I am only down around 18,000 stubs. So instead of spending 26,000 stubs by 
putting in the minimum, you know, sell now that I would have gotten. Uh, instead of spending 26, I only spent 18,000 stubs. Now that is that to me is is very very good. I I saved 6,000 stubs from using my method, which again, not like I made stubs. I'm still buying these players to do the collections, but but where my method really pays off is when we get these stubs back and we get the uh the experience here that will push me over to silver 1. That's worth it to me. Spending 18,000 stubs for three players plus I get back um around 8,000 stubs, right? So realistically, I spent about 10,000 stubs and did three collections. Now, yes, the Pirates, the um the white Sox and the tigers are three of the cheaper teams i've already done this method for these four teams here right what's important about this is it doesn't matter the amount of stubs that i save right it doesn't matter that the pirates were a cheaper team and the three teams that i did were a cheaper team what matters is the principle right my principle saved me about eight thousand stubs you're not going to make money using this method to uh, to do the collections, but you are going to save thousands and thousands of stubs, which is going to add up, right? We don't know. We don't know what the, um, what the final collection is going to be. Last year, obviously, it was Hannes, and you collected all of these to, uh, to get that. Talking about that, there's a ball and is a habit pack, just like that. Um, so go ahead, go through each one of these collections, see what players you have. Uh, see what face the franchise players and, and whatnot that you have go through these collections and you're going to get a ton of experience and a ton of um, a, a ton of great things. Now, we are going to take a look here in a second at what players were able to get um, by completing by completing certain teams. Right. But I just want to show you, you probably have. A lot of these that you don't even realize probably have a lot of these cards that you don't even realize and it's better to collect these and do these collections early on um so before these guys rise in price so just a few of the players that i'd like to highlight for collections the yankees reward this jason giambi card is a glitch this card i've used in some br uh, I don't think it's showing my stats right now, which is a little weird, but I've used him in BR. He's hit a few home runs for me. I've used him in the showdowns, the ALE showdowns. He's done very, very well for me there. This Cody Allen, closer, this is a very good right-handed pitcher to have. He's got a four-seam fastball, pretty decent changeup, and pretty good knuckle curve. Now, this card is probably only going to be in your bullpen for the first little bit. This is the Indians. Uh, relief pitcher. This is a very good pitcher, especially early on if you do these collections and you need some right-handed diamonds in your bullpen. Another very good card if you're looking for a lefty in the bullpen is this Brewers closer, Dan Plezak. Four-seam slider and two-seam. Three, another three-pitch reliever, but a very good diamond lefty at that. Izzy, this is the Cardinals relief pitcher. Izzy is a very, very good relief pitcher here. Uh, Four-seam fastball, good velocity, very good cutter, high velocity, high dip. The curveball, huge differential between the four-seam and the curveball here the, in speed. Very, very good card to have. This Mike Piazza card obviously is the best. Uh, I say obviously because the Dodgers have the most expensive collection. With Mookie, Bellinger, uh, all their really good diamonds that they have, Bueller, Kershaw, right? This Piazza card, if you get your hands on it, before the Biggio card, I, I genuinely think this is one of the top catchers in the game, at least offensively, one of the best catchers. I'm going to talk about this Adam Adovino card when I take a look at your guys' teams. This is a very good card to get. 
The last team collection that I'd like to take a look at is the A's. This is a very good card. We're going to talk about it here in a minute or two, but this is another really good card to get if you need a good bullpen. Now, I just want to head back over here and collect these cards. And you can see how my stub count looks after that. So collecting all of them and collecting those those cards that I went through, the signature, the breakout, stuff like that, you can see that I have 111,000 stubs. After all the, the collections, I'm only down 10,000 from doing the, the few collections, and, and not bad at all. Definitely a great way to save stubs, and like I said, any amount of stubs that you can save is great. All right, guys, so the last thing that we're going to look at before we look at my team in this video is Kyle's team. So Kyle has been a viewer for a long time of mine, and I think that this is a perfect example of a team that has pretty good players. However, the lineup needs to be fixed. Now, we went over this last week. Um, remember, we talked about lineup construction and how you shouldn't have more than two of the same handed batter so no two righties no two lefties in a row that's where the new three batter minimum rule comes into effect where if you have three right handed batters in a row like Kyle does here somebody could bring in a right handed pitcher I don't know let's say Dennis Eckersley E93 and throws that killer slider down and away to, to three right handers in a row now granted Gary uh, Gary Sheffield DJ LeMahieu and Willie Mays all are good hitters. However, I really think that you know a good pitcher, given the opportunity, will be able to take advantage of the three righties in a row. So if, Kyle, if you're watching this, right, I would definitely move your lineup around. Right? I think that face the franchise Joey Gallo and face the franchise Olsen could be two great players for this team. Right, that Todd Helton is a good card. However, I don't think that he has the the power that's needed at first base. I think Olsen, with his diamond defense and his great power, would be a great replacement for Todd Helton for this team. Um, but keeping going, right, with the lineup here, his players are for the most part good. Right, he could get a Gallo, he could get an Olsen. Right, maybe he could get a, a diamond second base. Maybe he could get. Tatis or something like that, but this is a very good team. The lineup is what's really letting him down. You have to, to pay attention to how you construct your lineup. You can't have three right-handed batters in a row. You want to have a speed contact guy lead off. You want to get the table set for the for the two, three, four hitters, right? This is a great team. I think that you could benefit from grinding for one or two of the face of the franchise cards. Most importantly, he should uh, fix his lineup. Now, the big theme of today's episode was collections. And if we take a look at his pitchers, I think that his pitchers could definitely benefit here from doing one or two of the collections. The, the biggest collection that stands out to me is the A's collection. If you finish the A's collection, you get a very good left-handed reliever in Sean Doolittle. This Sean Doolittle card, while it only has three pitches, right? It's his control is great, his break is great, the velocity on his four seam fastball is superb, especially mixing that in with his with his speed differential, 10 mile an hour difference between the changeup and the four seam, and a 13 mile an hour difference between the four seam and the slider. This is a very good looking card, right? His hits per nine is high. His strikeouts per nine is very high. His base on ball per nine is, is pretty high as well. This is a very, very good looking card. The other really good reliever that I think is out of the collections this year is Adam Adovino. Look at the pitch selection that Adam Adovino has. A slider, 
a two-seamer, a cutter, a four-seam, a changeup. Excellent pitches. He's got pitches that move this way. He's got pitches that move this way. His slider, right, is going to give you that hard break away to righties. His cutter is going to give you that, that little bit of a faster but still similar cut to the slider. The changeup is going to go down. This is a very good looking card. Speed differential between the, the four seam and the slider is great. Speed differential between the cutter and the slider. Pretty good as well. Five miles an hour is is fairly significant if the ball's coming in pretty hot. Um, this is a very good looking card. You you stick this Adam Adovino card and you stick the Sean Doolittle card that I just went over in your team, Kyle, and you are looking very very solid. You have the Raleigh, you have the the Mo, you have the Eckersley, right? Throw in the the really good lefty. Throw in another really good righty instead of Kenley Jansen. This team is looking very solid. All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and finish the video here by taking a look at my team. Now, this week, I wasn't expecting to not be able to grind as much. Uh, we went back to class, and that was uh, that took away a lot of time. There was a lot of issues doing stuff online for my classes, so wasn't able to grind as much as I would have liked. I also had to do a 24-hour stream, somebody in my Twitch chat, which I'm live right now, twitch.tv slash strikeout1066, had to redeem the 24-hour channel point reward. <laughs> Shout out to Mets. So my team, while not improving uh, a lot, did improve, right? We, we got the Ryan Sandberg. We also got the face of the franchise, Josh Bell. Um, we put Matt Olson in right field. We're going to try him out there. Um, I want to see what Josh Bell is like at first base. And I am not hitting well with Aaron Judge online. I'm 0 for 11, which, you know, small sample size, but so far not the best. And I am halfway done, over halfway done actually, with the March to October that I have getting... Blake Snell. I wanted to do something different and uh, save some time uh, to to stream some, you know, franchise on stream. So I've been doing a March to October on Dynamic, which I recommend doing. I I'm already up to Legend, but half of my games I didn't have to play on Legend, so that was great. Uh, I got 17 points the first first half of the season. I I didn't. I wasn't in first place. The Yankees are pretty hard to beat. Um, looking at our relievers, we still have our two lefties out of the bullpen. Like I said, I'm trying to get Sean Doolittle. Uh, I do have other golds or guys that I could put there, but I, I like the bullpen that I have right now. Um, but I am grinding for those collection rewards as well. So not the biggest improvement to my team, but uh, definitely not bad. We're up to an 89 overall. Our pitching definitely needs to go up. I'd like to get a little bit more speed as well, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with where my team is. If you guys want to send me your teams for next week's video, definitely do that. But I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you guys next Tuesday to uh, to take a look at your teams, and we'll, we'll pick our theme based on what... Uh, what chat tells me they need help with. But uh, have a good day, guys, and I appreciate you guys watching.